it's that wasted talent that that bothers me much more than the funneling of some people to fancier schools. Hi, I'm Dr. Jed McCosco at Wake Forest University and Academic Influence. And today we have Professor Larry Tribe coming to us from near Harvard, where he is still very active and busy. And Professor Tribe, it was really fun to hear about your life trajectory and how you ended up as a student, undergraduate student at Harvard at the only, only at the age of 16. And the thing that I want to ask you about is from, from back when you were a 16 year old till now, universities have changed. And, and from my perspective, um, sort of the rich have gotten richer and the poor uh, universities have gotten poorer. Yeah. And I'm not sure that that's so good. Like, for example, in your interview, you, you mentioned that your friend asked you if you're going to go to Berkeley. You said, yeah, I think I'm going to Berkeley. And he said, well, what about Reed College or Harvard? And back then, Reed and, and Harvard were sort of, at least in that guy's mind, equal. But now Harvard has become so much more well known, and you you know you see movies about Harvard and Goodwill Hunting and all this other stuff, yeah, but yeah. but not Reed. So so it's just sort of not as uh, even playing field. How do you feel about that? Well, not very good. For one thing, you know when my my friend he was a a, a kid in in my dri driver ed class when when he when he said how about Reed and Harvard? I had never heard of either. I I had grown up you know, in a middle class community in San Francisco, I had literally never heard of Harvard University. And I said, what's Harvard? And he said, you got to be kidding. Now, you, you couldn't find anybody under a rock who hadn't heard of Harvard. And I think the rich have gotten richer, the elite have gotten more influential. And I think we're completely out of balance. I mean, the, the gap between the haves and the have nots has gotten worse. The country, there may be less abject poverty, but the middle class, as my friend and Senator uh, Elizabeth Warren has eloquently pointed out, has been really hollowed out. People have a much harder time climbing the ladder of success. There, there are all sorts of obstacles. Um, and I think we have to get back to a world in which we realize that, for one thing, there are a lot of great you know, junior colleges and and uh, and free public colleges, and the idea that if you don't get a degree from one of these fancy universities, you're you're somehow doomed, is a big mistake. It should also, however, be the case that anybody with the ability to do it should be able to go to whatever school they want to. There ought not to be huge financial obstacles, um, and a lot needs to be done to make that to make that a lot better. Uh, I think we need to put much more investment in elementary and secondary education and preschool. I mean, people who have been deprived of, of the kind of support that a family where, you know, there are maybe a couple of parents who can help their kids learn and where there are teachers who have decent salaries, kids who are deprived of that are, really hobbled from the beginning, and there's almost no way for them to catch up. So we have a huge amount to do, and that's why I think it really would be important for, for Biden's two uh, big initiatives, both the infrastructure plan and, and the kind of social investment plan to at least get some, some uh, sort of headway in the current Congress. But instead of having representative government, we have obstructive government, government that doesn't really seem to work, a filibuster that can prevent one of the two houses of Congress from getting anywhere. So we have so much work to do. I mean, it's, it's, it's people like, like your daughter, whose generation will have to improve the world that we have unfortunately left them. Yes. Well, and that is so true. You're talking a lot about some of the major problems of inequality within, you know, people. But what about inequality between universities? And and just speaking as an alum from one of the, the probably the greatest university in the United States, um, you know, and, and one who's then been a professor there, what, what should prof professors and alumni and university presidents and trustees be thinking about when they're thinking about that inequality between a Harvard and a Reed or a Harvard and a state school? What should we be thinking about? 
Well, for one thing, we shouldn't exaggerate the differences in quality. I mean, there is inequality in resources, but we turn out a bunch of horrible people too. I mean, Ted Cruz is a product of Harvard University and Harvard Law School. Josh Hawley is a product of Yale. Uh, you know, there's no guarantee that when you go to one of these good schools, you'll have any any sense or any commitment to the common good. I think that the universities themselves need to be more willing to share their resources, put more of their courses online. Harvard and MIT are doing much more of that. Many of my colleagues are putting courses online that are then available free of charge to huge numbers of people, tens of thousands at a time. Um, a lot of the parents who pay high tuitions sometimes complain, you know, what are we getting for our money if people can get this stuff free? Well, you are getting something. You're getting kind of a social interaction of your kids with other kids, very different backgrounds. Although that during the COVID area, when so much of so much of education was just by Zoom and virtual, that's somewhat leveled the playing field, interestingly enough because the biggest differences between a Harvard and a Yale on the one hand and a big state school, Wisconsin, or Minnesota, Texas, um, really is not the quality of the professors. There are marvelous professors in junior colleges all over the country. The biggest difference really is in the opportunities you have to meet other really talented kids. And there are more of them in clusters in some of these schools than others. And during the period when people couldn't really interact in person and everybody was basically sitting at home in their shorts watching, uh, watching something go on on the screen, that kind of leveled the playing field. And it reminded people that you can get a really very good education at a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that, that is true. Uh, there's something still very special about the top 30 in our country or the top 50. Um, but uh, and, and I, I feel like it's changed from when you went off to college, when you didn't even know what Harvard was, you know, so well, you would have unusual that way. I think that was a little unusual, most, but still there were the people in my high school. knew. yeah, I feel like back 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 in your day, there were people who were just as smart as you who were going to their local local colleges. Yeah. And now those people are being funneled to the top 30. And so, you know, it's just a, maybe it's just a different environment. We have to be yeah, aware of it. Jed, what, what bothers me isn't just that the people are funneled to the top 30. Talk about people who are really smart all over the world. Just think about it. There are geniuses in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. There are brilliant little girls in Afghanistan. There are people with enormous potential and talent, you know, people who could cure cancer, people who could make massive advances in computer science, people whose understanding of history and literature could open new vistas of human of the human spirit and their people those people are often denied even the ability to learn how to read they're they're punished for for reading and writing in many places girls especially it's that wasted talent that that bothers me much more than the funneling of some people to fancier schools yeah, I can see what you're saying. And that, that's a good place for us to end this interview, that, that there are so many bigger problems out there. So if, if a, a group wants to sue Harvard for, you know, its affirmative action stance or whatnot, maybe there are bigger problems out there that they can worry about or that we can worry about. It's, I think that's, that's a really good point. Well, thank you so much, Professor Trout, for taking the time with us today. We really My appreciate pleasure. it. I enjoyed it.